Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā ratatou katoa. Good evening, everyone. And it's my privilege to add a word of welcome to this uh, inaugural Bishop Paul Reeves Memorial Lecture. And AUT is delighted to be part of uh, making this happen. I want to thank Joe Brosnahan, Chair of Leadership New Zealand, for organising the lecture, um, and Lady Reeves and Jane and Sarah for their support. Uh, and it's wonderful to be here in the cathedral. And we thank our gracious hosts here for this very appropriate uh, and marvelous venue for the, the first uh, lecture in what we hope will be a series, uh, keeping alive Sir Paul's legacy of thought leadership and much more. It's my privilege to make a tribute to Sir Paul on behalf of the Auckland University of Technology. And as Chris has mentioned, uh, Sir Paul was the chancellor of our university for six years, um, from 2005 until his death just over a year ago. Sir Paul was Chancellor during the period of the most dramatic growth and change in our institution. Uh, and as we went through these turbulent uh, and exciting times, he was a rock, an anchor, a pillar, a totra, uh, as has been uh, said, uh, that kept the turbulence uh, together that kept the energy uh, moving forward. And he was a marvellous colleague and mentor to me uh, because I was fortunate and privileged and honoured to be the Vice-Chancellor throughout the full term for which he held the role of Chancellor. And indeed he was a force to be reckoned with, sustained by what seemed boundless energy and enthusiasm, eager to do things, to be involved. He was always keen to travel with us. And I remember one time when we were um, stuck in Los Angeles on our way to New York for a meeting, um, and he was with me and a couple of colleagues from AUT, and we decided to go shopping in Santa Monica because uh, he thought it would be colder than he'd anticipated when packing when we got to New York, and he wanted to buy a jersey. So we walked down um, the strip in, in Santa Monica, the, uh, the mall there, and came to the first thing that looked like a clothing shop and I went in with him um, because we were the guys and the ladies went on somewhere else and um, it became instantly clear that the shop we had chosen was for the young, the hip, the possibly delinquent um, and was not really for gentlemen of our sagely age and uh, experience and so I suggested to Paul that we move on but he said no, no, I'll find something in here um, and he went and tried on various things and eventually came out uh, looking fantastic in a blue and white striped uh, jersey which he proudly wore for the rest of the time on the trip. Um, so he was a man uh, prepared to try new things. And of course on the trip he was keen to keep in touch with Beverly, constantly asking us what time was it back in Auckland um, and then saying, oh dear, I've just rung her when we said it's four o'clock in the morning. Um, but as well as a man of action he, who kept things in motion, he was also somebody who brought stillness and thoughtfulness and calm into his orbit. The motto of his personal coat of arms is the single word, whakarongo, listen, which he did very well. Uh, he was somebody who offered that support of a listening ear and the encouragement that went with it to many of the people that he encountered in the university community without any regard for their rank or their role. Uh, in that way, despite being a man of huge substance and mana, he was also a man of great humility uh, who people were attracted to as a person. His calm listening support uh, for my role in the university is something that I could not have done without. When Sir Paul agreed to become our Chancellor, he was of course New Zealand's elder statesman and one of its most well-known figures, with as many people have mentioned, huge mana, standing, international experience. But what was AUT? Still a very new university. People were unsure of what it was and what standing it had. And despite this, and more likely because of this, he was prepared to take on the role. Because for Paul, education was a crucial mission. In his own life, he felt that education had made him what he was. 
He saw the liberating and transformative power of learning, of going beyond the familiar, of the opportunity to have knowledge and broader understandings that fed curiosity, imagination, creativity, tolerance of others and other views. He said, and it's often been quoted, that in his role as New Zealand's Governor General, he saw that he could straddle the fault lines of society to bring people together. And he continued to do that through his support of education at the university. He encouraged AUT to confirm its potential to be a place of opportunity through education, to take its mission to places, communities, whānau, households and others that had not been offered or had not perceived the opportunities of university, to reach out to, embrace as many who had the ability and aspiration to succeed as we could. One of the many things uh, that people remember and enjoyed about Sir Paul is, of course, his wonderful sense of irony and levelling humour, which was very often irreverent, always acutely observed. Um, and it, as well as his great sense of occasion and dignity, he also had a compassionate sense of the ridiculous, uh, which often helped us to regain the university's perspective when things, as they often did, got fraught. He perceived the humanness in, in all things, its glories, its potential, its frailties, and he was comfortable with it all. And from his ground of faith in the ultimate goodness, he seemed to radiate the certainty that all might be redeemed and released to be fully themselves. Paul Reeves showed us, in a way that he strived to live, the answer to the great question, what is the most important thing in the world it is people, it is people, it is people. So at the beginning of this event, for the inaugural lecture in this series commemorating Paul Reeves, which has been mounted by Leadership New Zealand, it's appropriate that we give voice to Sir Paul himself. In an interview on leadership that Paul gave during his time as Chancellor, he had this to say. A leader, as I see it, is someone who's part of a group who has the ability to see where the hopes and the fears, the possibilities and potential of the group can come together so that he or she can verbalize them. And in speaking, those words have a dynamic which gives impetus to the group to move forward to where the group wants to go. But it's not simply a matter of verbalizing, of talking about it. It's also a matter of being an exemplar of what you're talking about. The legacy of Sir Paul continues to offer us that exemplar of leadership, that exemplar that expresses so much of the values and the character that make us who we are as a people, the people of Aotearoa New Zealand, that come together as a diverse and vibrant nation with a unique and wonderful part to play in the world. Nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.